How does stress affect our bodies? If you're like me, you could get overwhelmed very, very quickly. Chronic stress can lead to feelings of ill health, make it difficult for you to function effectively. How does it affect fibroids? You might think you're coping pretty well, but perhaps it's doing things that you don't realize. Fibroids can range from small, even smaller lumps that don't cause any symptoms to large, even bigger masses that can cause significant discomfort, heavy menstrual bleeding and problems with fertility. While the exact cause of fibroids remains unclear, we know various factors contribute to their growth. From your inherited genes to hormone imbalances and lifestyle factors, one area of growing interest and research is the potential link between stress and fibroid growth. In this video, let's explore how stress might influence the development and growth of fibroids and what you could do to reduce the effect. Stress is a natural response to challenging situations. Under stress, your body triggers a series of physiological changes that we call the fight or flight response. This response involves the release of stress hormones like cortisol and adrenaline, which prepare the body to deal with any immediate threats. However, if you experience chronic stress that persists over an extended period of time, it might lead to several things, including a prolonged release of these hormones and result in various health issues. Now, one big impact of chronic stress is its ability to disrupt the delicate balance of hormones in the body, particularly those related to our reproductive system. Cortisol, the primary stress hormone, can influence levels of estrogen and progesterone, which we know play key roles in the development or growth of fibroids. So high cortisol levels may increase the body's estrogen levels or alter the body's sensitivity to estrogen, potentially contributing to the growth of fibroids. Chronic stress is also associated with increased levels of inflammation in the body. When our body is under stress, it produces higher levels of inflammatory chemicals, which can lead to tissue inflammation and other immune responses. There are some studies suggesting that this inflammation may contribute to the growth of fibroids because the inflammatory environment can lead to the fibroid cells multiplying and growing. The other thing is that stress often leads to lifestyle choices that can indirectly affect the growth of fibroids. What do I mean? Under prolonged stress or chronic stress, you may turn to unhealthy coping mechanisms. For example, a poor diet, lack of exercise, smoking or drinking too much alcohol. All of these behaviors are linked with gaining weight, more hormone imbalance, overall poor health. All of these are risk factors for fibroids to grow. So what is this evidence linking stress to fibroid growth? For now, we don't have direct evidence linking stress to fibroid growth. But some scientists involved in these studies suggest hormones because they think if you have higher levels of stress hormones, you likely have higher levels of circulating estrogen, which promotes the growth of fibroids. Then psychosocial stress. If you experience chronic stress from work, from relationships, financial problem, they think you might be more likely to develop fibroids or at least make existing fibroids grow. Then there's inflammation and fibroids growth. This is still being studied, but they think that if you have higher inflammatory markers, you're more likely to experience fibroid related symptoms. Given all this, possibility. What about strategies to mitigate the impact of stress on fibroids? So there's enough to indicate that dealing with stress or managing it will not only enhance your overall health, but could deal with fibroid growth and symptoms. So some strategies to consider are stress reducing techniques, practices like mindfulness, meditation, being prayerful if you're a person of faith, deep breathing exercises, muscle relaxation, which can help to reduce stress levels by promoting relaxation and reducing the production of stress hormones. Yoga and Tai Chi. These mind-body practices combine physical postures, 
breathing exercises and meditation to reduce stress and promote overall well-being. Yoga in particular has been shown to help to reduce cortisol levels and relieve symptoms of stress. There's also cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT. It's a form of talking therapy that helps individuals identify and change negative thought patterns and behaviors that contribute to stress. So CBT can be effective in managing chronic stress and anxiety. And what about lifestyle modifications? They've certainly got a role to play. Physical activity is a well-known stress reliever. Regular exercise, whatever kind that you love doing, will help to reduce cortisol levels, improve your mood and overall health. Walking, swimming, cycling, strength training are just examples of things you could do to manage stress and promote a healthy hormone balance. Eating a good balance of fruits, vegetables and whole grain, cutting down red meat and processed food will also promote the same. Next, adequate sleep. Don't ignore the benefits of getting your seven to eight hours of sleep, especially in your childbearing years or as you transition into perimenopause and menopause. This is essential for helping to manage stress and of course your overall health. Professional support from qualified counsellor can help. Joining a local support group or group of friends with similar issues can provide emotional support when you need it. And some people might want to consider complementary therapies, for example, acupuncture, which has been shown to help in reducing stress. Some women have also reported feeling relief from stress after using some herbal supplements. While the effectiveness of this still needs a lot of study and not everyone experiences the same, it might be something that you want to consider if you're battling chronic stress. You can consider ashwangada, rhodiola, vitamin B or vitamin D, but it's extremely important to consult your doctor before starting any form of herbal or supplement preparation to make sure it is suitable for you. Dealing with fibroids, chronic stress could be a factor. Imbalanced hormones are definitely in the picture. Check out the description box for one of my free guides that can help you navigate your symptoms. Thanks for watching. This playlist also has information about fibroids and I'll see you there.